Ok, siamo live. Uh, Pierpaolo, uh, ah, c'è un delay di circa 30 secondi, quindi se fai delle domande loro ti rispondono... 30 secondi? 30... Sì, più o meno. È tanto. Una trasmissione, <ride> sì. Ok. Però, però va, ok, siamo partiti, siamo live. Uh... Fantastico. Quindi adesso si, vanno, si connetteranno le persone. Hola, hola a todas, por favor, notificar su presencia con comentarios eh, en el, la página Facebook del MUI. Hola, hola, ci sono già otto persone connesse, danno like. E eh, le vedo, vedo anch'io. Ciarito, hola, hola eh, Ciarito. Eh. Hola. Hola a todos. Hola a todos, muy bien. Adesso esperiamo un momentito. Ah, sta il Gabo. Gabo è il design program director in Toluca. Is a colleague and a friend. Right. Yep. Rafa. Hello, Rafa. Okay, nice, nice. Uh, okay. So, ciao, Paolo. <laughs> <laughs> ciao, ciao, Mariana. <laughs> ciao, Mariana. Ah, Victorino. Oh, che bello. Victorino, so happy to meet you again. Hi. Marco también, hola Victorino, sí, sí, muy bien. So, so, so many friends. Ok, so, uh, I think we can start, ok? Uh, Pierpaolo, uh, today, uh, thank you very much for being with us, I'm going to introduce you properly. Uh, today, uh, we are going to be live from the MUI, Uh, uh, Facebook page, so you're gonna uh, give your guest lecture to both my students of the uh, subject of uh, Prospectiva del Diseño, but also the general public of uh, uh, MUI, okay? okay. Uh, so, uh, let's start. Also, uh, students and people will be able to uh, 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 watch you and listen to you both in a synchronic way now live and also in an asynchronic way because uh, uh, the, the the video is going to be recorded okay so it, it's a very nice format it's uh, working uh, uh, quite good for us so I hope you're gonna uh, uh, enjoy it so okay uh, uh, let me introduce Pier Paolo okay uh, uh, today we're gonna have a guest lecture okay uh, about uh, Olivetti uh, and Mexico. Uh, Pierpaolo Peruccio is a friend of Tech de Monterrey, of the Architecture, Arts and Design School, <coughs> of MUI. We've been working together because we presented the exhibition Olivetti makes that he curated uh, past year uh, uh, in uh, MUI in uh, Puebla. Uh, Pierpaolo is a scholar in design, He's an historian and theorist of design in Politecnico di Torino, where he is also vice dean of the design school and is also responsible of many different programs, in including masters, uh, 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 both in Italy and in France, for instance. And he is also, uh, this is very prestigious, uh, uh, one of the few board members of the World Design Organization Uh, uh, in between 2019 and uh, 2021. So uh, this is uh, Pier Paolo, the amazing lecturer uh, we're gonna uh, listen to uh, today. Uh, ah, also Alfredo, hola Alfredo. Hola. So, uh, uh, well, thank you very much Alfredo for being with us. Uh, and also thank you very much Pier Paolo for being with us. Uh, I think we can start. 
and uh, I'm gonna uh, share your screen. I don't know if you wanna introduce yourself a little bit more. As usual, uh, guys, uh, in the outer world, you can interact with Pierpaolo uh, uh, using uh, Facebook comments, okay? Uh, so let's start, Pierpaolo, okay. all yours. Thank you, Marco, for uh, the introduction. I'm very happy to, to stay with you, of course, only in a digital way. Um, as we decided, we will share, uh, we can say, a, a very nice talk about, I hope nice, uh, anyway, a talk about Olivetti uh, typewriter machine. It's a very, very important company. But first of all, I just want to, to say just a few words about myself. Let's say that I, I am a designer, designer historian, not only a design historian, but half designer and half historian with a design approach linked to history, not only based on the reading of the past, but also we can say as a means to achieve innovation and a better understanding of future with more effective tools and awareness. So this is the, we can say, one of the main uh, um, activity, design activity of the Polytechnico. So history is part of the design activity. So it's a kind of tool. So first of all, uh, I'm here. So it, this is uh, me uh, with uh, some colleagues. Uh, we, uh, we were sitting at Palacio de Bellas Artes in uh, Mexico City. It happened in 2018, as you see here, these are two posters of uh, the exhibition that Marco uh, mentioned before. Uh, the first on the left side <coughs> was in, uh, as I said, in Mexico City. It happened during the um, Mexico City World Design Capital 2018. And on the right side, the poster of the um, exhibition in uh, Museo Tecnologico de Monterrey in Puebla. So uh, it closed, we can say, one year uh, ago was amazing experience. These are just two pictures of, of the exhibit design in, uh, uh, in Mexico City at Palacio Bez Artes and in the museum in, in Puebla. And we organized with Marco and other colleagues uh, in the museum. So first of all, what is Olivetti? Uh, Olivetti is an Italian typewriter manufacturing company known uh, worldwide for the highest quality of products and communication. Today is 100% part of Telecom Italia. I'm sure that you, you know this company. Uh, it's a manufacturer again company um, that produce basically you know, these computers, tablets, printers, and other business products. The headquarter of Olivetti is in uh, Ivrea, in the metropolitan city of Turin. And today, uh, we can say that, I, as I said, Olivetti is 100% Telecom Italia, and Telecom Italia is 35%, something like that, um, French, uh, French. So uh, there is a French company that owns, uh, we can say, a large part of this company. It is just to introduce uh, one of the main, uh, we can say, issues. The second topic uh, regards, as you can see in uh, this slide, we can say the complexity of uh, the design uh, of, sorry, the history of, uh, we can say the Olivetti company. So mm, we can say that there is a lot of complexity. Complexity comes from the Latin word complexus. This is really, really important because it means, uh, we can say something in which everything is connected. So we cannot separate the single parts to get the big, the entire picture. So to understand, in a, we can say in a good way, Olivetti, we need to understand uh, society, we need to understand design, of course, industry and architecture, and of course, other important things. And we can say that we usually consider the history of several, uh, we can say, um, disciplines uh, all together. So for instance, when we talk about Olivetti, we have to consider the history of design, the history of industry. Uh, we can say also the history of um, <clears throat> um, society, of course, and of course, the social uh, 
um, aspects is really, really important, the history of graphic design. So we need to, 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 to take into account also the, the entire complexity. If we talk about Ivrea, which is the place where uh, Olivetti was born, we have to consider that just uh, one year ago, one, one year and a half ago, um, Ivrea entered the World Heritage List. And so you, as you can uh, read in, uh, in this slide, the industrial city of Ivrea is located in Piemonte, and uh, it entered with a very, very important, we can say, uh, recognition. So um, here there is the term legacy. Legacy is uh, really, really important. Um, this is part of the title of this class. As I said, legacy is something, as we can see in, in the point number two, something transmitted by or received from an ancestor or predecessor, predecessor or from the past. So um, the concept of legacy is really, really important when we talk about Olivetti. Olivetti legacy means to redesign idea also of community even far away from Italy. For instance, reproducing the same features in terms of high quality of architecture, high quality of design and high quality of social services and, and so on. Maybe in, uh, in some parts that, that are very, very far from, from Turin, from Ivrea. As you can see in this slide, there is a, a very important plant <clears throat> design in 1968 by architect Legorreta, that of course you know very, very well. It is an important plant that uh, remained, unfortunately, just on the paper. And you can see here some of the main legacy of uh, Olivetti. You can recognize, it's written in Spanish, so it's, I think it's clear, Manufactura, Casa de Fuerza, Desperdicio, Oficinas, uh, so in, in particular, Servicios Sociales y uh, Vestidores. So these are the main uh, characteristic of the, the legacy, we can say, of Olivetti. So um, first of all, this is a, ah, sorry, what happened? I don't know, here, okay. As I said, um, this is just a, ah, sorry. Can you, Marco, can you, okay. If there are any questions, of course, you can interrupt me. Anyway, as I said, here there are the main characteristics, characteristics of the legacy. We can recognize some, on the right side, some social services, really, really important. The mensa, so the canteen, the library, biblioteca in Italian, the kindergarten, really, really important, uh, spogliatoi, um, the dressing room, and of course, also, uh, we can say, a clinic, um, a medical clinic also. So these are the main uh, characteristics of uh, this factory that is, of course, something connected to the production. And we can see, we can recognize on the left side, um, the warehouse and officinas, uh, also for, uh, um, we can say, the, the, the um, we can say, the, um, how, do, how can we say, um, to, to collect all the pieces and to create the objects, of course. But there are also on the right side some social elements, really, really important. Here uh, we have another example of legacy. This is for the Olympic Games. As you know, Olivetti was one of the main actors in 1968 for the, the Olympic Games. Um, it happened after the Olympic Games in Rome in 1916 and in Tokyo 1964. So Oli Olivetti also carried out uh, a main role in the, the same uh, event, also organizing, we can say, everything. We can say from the broadcast reports to the design of uh, some uh, um, press rooms and, and some press offices for uh, uh, the periodistas, of course, who came uh, uh, to, to Mexico City. <clears throat> Here uh, you see some uh, 
very important uh, icons and elements of the corporate image of the Olympic Games. Of course, Olivetti uh, just, um, we can say, try to deal with, with this culture, but of course they produce something different. This is an example of what uh, they did. So there were basically 19, uh, um, you, you can see here, 19 uh, cent centros de prensa, uh, so press offices. You can recognize on the left side all the names, Villa Olimpica, Estadio, Maria Isabel Hotel, uh, and et cetera, et cetera. And for each, uh, we can say, location, um, the Olivetti company uh, provided with some uh, important uh, furniture and, of course, typewriters, which is really, uh, really important. And reporters were assigned, uh, we can say, workstation complete with typewriters and all the necessary uh, materials. Here we have one of the main uh, press rooms called Libertador Miguel Hidalgo, uh, set up at the Olympic Village. We can recognize on the right side uh, the main uh, icon, uh, iconic, uh, we can say, logotype and symbol of Olivetti, um, maybe you, you see it. Uh, it. It was designed by Marcello Nizzoli in 1952 on the right side. It's quite huge. And we can say that also, as we saw before, the walls were adorned with the banners, uh, with the logo, as you see here, Olivetti press office in the three main languages of the Olympic games. So French, of course, uh, English and um, Spanish. Um, here there are some pictures of the Centro de Prensa. Uh, we have to also to say that all the prom promotional material given to the journalists were designed by Milton Glaser of the Pushpin Studio and Giorgio Suavi. Pushpin Studio was a very important uh, studio firm in the uh, United States. Here we have some uh, on the left side, some elements that we can recognize like the lamp here. Um, here there are some elements just to separate the different areas, different, um, different offices. And here there are some uh, other elements, of course, the typewriting mach machines. Uh, and everything was designed by Egidio Bonfante and the architect Silvana Bellino was at the time really, really young. Here we have again uh, um, another picture. We can we can see some seating, uh, some sofa again with the same texture, and here some journalists. I just want to share with you this video. Um, it's an um, to um, the director <clears throat> of the um, we can say marketing. Uh, of Olivetti during that period and was in charge also for uh, organizing everything um, regarding the, the press office. The exposition is a recuerdo of the 110 años de Olivetti, el 2018 cumple 110 años, prácticamente desde su fundación. Eh, se evidenció sobre todo por el diseño de los productos. Fue innovadora en su campo. Podríamos decir que fue la, la empresa que tenía el Steve Jobs de hoy, en el sentido de que el diseño se le dio mucha importancia al producto. El evento de las Olimpiadas de la cual fui director técnico eh, y operativo de los centros de prensa. Asistieron alrededor de 5.000 periodistas de todo el mundo. Y, y prácticamente aquí hay algunos recuerdos. Jacobo Sandowski trabajó en la Olimpiada como director de Relaciones Públicas de los centros de prensa. Eh, las mochilas que subsidiaban a los periodistas y a los deportistas que contenían del otro lado, pueden ver eh, blog notes, máscaras, souvenirs, etc. Y después guardaban, eh, obviamente, eh, los resultados que se iban acomodando en los 5.000 casilleros instalados 
personalizados para cada periodista. Hey, <clears throat> so here we can recognize uh, another important, um, uh, it's not a typewriting machine, but it's a computer. And on the bottom side of the slide, the uh, programmer 101, which, which was one, uh, which was the first desktop computer designed 1964, 1965, by a team of engineers, of course, and architects. Um, as you see, it's in a swimming pool, so it was very useful also for the evaluation to evaluate uh, also uh, the timing of uh, the athletes. Here again, some, um, um, we can say, materials designed for, uh, uh, again, uh, uh, the journalist. Here you see some images in uh, color uh, of the center, the press offices and and also we can recognize again uh, all the corporate image of the olympic games here again in a stadium uh, and some advertising what's really really important this was designed by walter balmer who was a designer graphic designer for uh, from switzerland you see these colors that came from also um we can say the tradition we can say also the legacy of Mexican Mexican culture, but I don't think I have to say anything about that. These are just some uh, interesting uh, spherical elements in the hall of the Stadio Azteca in 1868. Uh, again, the same colors, and everything was in connection. Also, there was a, a very interesting link between uh, we can say the corporate image of uh, um, the entire event, and of course the work of the designers and the graphic designer uh, of Olivetti for the press offices. Yeah, there are the Judas uh, sculptures that you know, of course, uh, designed by the Urban Design Program and the logo of Mexico 1968. Here again, other uh, rooms. As I said before, there were 19, uh, 19 rooms. So uh, some, um, you can say, uh, let's say, many many spaces some very huge uh, to redesign of course typewriters calculators and everything uh, were the main actors of these rooms but also some uh, pictures some photographs as, as we can see on the right side designing um, for uh, the, the olympic games in a certain way was also designing for uh, Mexico, for Latin countries. So it was one of the main activities of Olivetti in Latin, in Latin countries, was really, really important. And this was uh, very important also to make a, a very strong advertising of their products. Here we have a factory designed by Felix Candela. Uh, Cubierta Sala is the, we can say, um, the company uh, who uh, constructed the, 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 the factory, we can recognize the, the concrete structure, which is very, very um, famous. And it's very typical of Felix Candela and Cubierta's ALA activities. And this is a Plantas Armadora, and we are in 19, in 1965. Uh, I want to share with you again another video. Uh, Miguel who was, uh, we can say, a key figure of Olivetti in uh, uh, starting from the real beginning when the factory started. We can say the first, uh, uh, we can say, um, uh, place for selling machines. Uh, typewriters machine happened in 1949. In 1953, 1955, also many uh, people, vendors, vendors, people who, who wanted to sell machines entering the company. So I just want to share with you what he said. And this video was also played during, as you see, the Palacio de Bellas Artes exhibition.
Bueno, yo ingresé en eh, Olivetti en 1955, fui vendedor, especialmente de máquinas portátiles. Estas máquinas las vendíamos casa en casa, entrábamos precisamente a demostrar que las gentes o las familias con eso podían mejorar mucho su educación los niños. Y luego posteriormente, me, por el éxito propiamente de, de que la máquina tenía mucho, mucha introducción y que se vendía incluso ya en los almacenes, entonces nosotros eh, logramos eh, poner distribuidores en toda la República. Y esto llevó a que tuviera la oportunidad de ser luego jefe de ventas de máquinas portátiles. Posteriormente a eso, eh, la empresa hasta amplió muchísimo, era una empresa de gran tecnología, era líder en México, tenía gran presencia en todo lo que corresponde a la parte de, de tecnología moderna y esto hizo que eh, la Olivetti creciera, creciera mucho. Al principio éramos 300 gentes, pero luego fue creciendo al punto que teníamos vendedores principalmente en cualquier lugar del país. En esas condiciones, el Olivetti se constituyó en el líder de lo que era la tecnología y cambio. Terminé siendo precisamente considerando con que se podía construir y se podía fabricar máquinas en México. Olivetti consideró que era muy importante y comenzamos a producir máquina Letra 22 en dos lugares, en Apizaco y en Tepeaca. Producíamos cerca de mil máquinas por día eh, y luego de ahí se vino una explosión en producción de otros productos en los cuales estaban la, las eh, computadoras, estaba toda la parte de máquinas eléctricas, de escribir, etcétera, copiadoras. Entonces se creó un gran consorcio que Olivetti creció, creció, creció y esto hizo que Olivetti que, que pudiera incluso en un momento determinado se partícipe eh, en, en áreas muy importantes en México, tanto en el gobierno como en el sector privado. En esas condiciones a mí me tocó entonces participar como eh, accionista y luego también como vicepresidente del Consejo hasta que Olivetti ya tomó todo su control. Quiero señalar que cuando hicimos la producción en México teníamos el apoyo técnico de IFREA, o sea, todo el apoyo técnico de, de, de Olivetti que venían y nos enseñaban y esto hizo que tuviéramos muy buenos técnicos luego en México que se generaron precisamente gracias a la educación de Olivetti. Quiero por último sí, decir que Olivetti para, para mí representa muchas cosas. Una de ellas, eh, eh, yo entré a Olivetti en 55 y encontré a, a la persona que trabajaba ahí, dos años antes había entrado, Lucía Costabile. Lucía Costabile eh, nos hicimos esposos en 1858 y a partir de ahí hemos vivido 60 años eh, juntos eh, lo cual Olivetti no representa no solamente el haber hecho un trabajo, sino representa todo un estilo de vida. Pero a su vez me impactó mucho y me ayudó, y así fue el hecho de que Olivetti, con el concepto que tenía en ese entonces y lo sigue teniendo, habla precisamente de lo que es la comunidad, la comunidad. Esto es una, una empresa con sentido social, con participación de los, emplea de los empleados, con participación de, de, de su cuidado en áreas tan importantes como la parte eh, ecológica, la parte educativa y, y la parte artística. Entonces, la comunidad para nosotros eh, marcó una línea de operación como empresa y esto lo hemos seguido, yo lo he seguido a través de los años con las diferentes empresas que me ha tocado presidir y organizar. Así que Olivetti no es un elemento nada más de una experiencia en la vida, sino es la vida con la experiencia de Olivetti. Bueno, eh, como ven, esta máquina es la letra 22, con la cual yo me inicié como vendedor. Eh, venía en, una, eh, en, una, en un estuche de, de, de vinilo, y eh, con esta máquina caminábamos en la calle eh, para enseñarla. Era una máquina que en ese entonces tan revolucionaria que técnicamente era maravillosa y sigue siendo maravillosa. Tan es así que sigue funcionando 
es una máquina de tantos años, sigue escribiendo, sigue escribiendo, sigue teniendo todos los instrumentos, pero era una máquina que aparte tenía una característica. Estaba construida con dos sistemas, un sistema interno, que es un sistema de modular, y un sistema externo. Esto hacía que nosotros cuando queríamos demostrar que la máquina era resistente, nos parábamos encima de la máquina. Y esto representaba una muestra que los niños y las gentes que tenían que comprarla no, no, se, iba, no se iba a romper. Esta máquina a su vez tenía todo un teclado perfe perfectamente, que ha sido el teclado que hoy se usan en las computadoras. Precisamente era el inicio. Y Olivetti creó un sistema en el cual se podían hacer todos los, todas las escrituras, de manera que se podía incluso hasta establecer mecanismos para borrar. Tenía dos sistemas la, la de, 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 de letras, tenía dos, varios pasos, y es una máquina verdaderamente perfecta. Esta la vendíamos, claro, no era un producto eh, económico para mucha gente, pero hicimos un procedimiento en el cual le dábamos 12 meses para pagar esta máquina a las familias. Fue la primera empresa en México que aceptó dar créditos de largo plazo porque sabía de la confianza que tenían en esta máquina. Y si no funcionaba, les tomábamos la máquina y les devolvíamos su dinero. En la historia que yo tuve como vendedor y luego como gerente de ventas de máquinas portátiles, nunca recibí un reclamo ni nunca recibí una máquina de regreso. Las leyes de México en ese entonces eh, constituían algunas limitaciones para la inversión eh, de tipo extranjera eh, y esto hacía que tenía que tener mínimo un 51% de inversión mexicana y un eh, 49% de inversión extranjera. Los eh, señores de Olivetti decidieron, y yo creo que fue excelente decisión, que quería fabricarlo y entonces hubo que organizar un grupo de inversionistas en las cuales yo fui uno de ellos, ya con la experiencia que teníamos. Eh, estaba también este, eh, Adalberto Cortesi, eh, también Miguel Escobedo, eh, Arnulfo, eh, éramos los que hicimos el grupo societario mexicano eh, con el 51% y Olivetti el 49%. Pero Olivetti nos dio todo, se desarrolló todo muy bien y nosotros, eh, cuando Olivetti decidió ya y hubo oportunidad legalmente de tomar el control completo de la fábrica, nosotros le, le vendimos las acciones y hemos tenido muy buen resultado en esa operación. Eh, cuando México intentó eh, participar en la Alianza Latinoamericana de Libre Comercio, que era la LALC, era un elemento muy importante y fue el primer paso que nuestro país dio para una integración que desafortunadamente ya no se dio bien. Pero Olivetti sí hizo uso de este proceso porque se hicieron sectores en esta alianza de la latinoamericana en donde se definía por cada país qué es lo que se podía fabricar y poder distribuir los productos a través de esta alianza. Era, era una alianza de tipo muy sencilla y comercial. Olivetti, entendiendo esto, lo que decidió es distribuir la producción en América Latina y se decidió que los argentinos tomaran el, el producto que eran las calculadoras. Claro, las calculadoras. Brasil, que decidió quedarse con las máquinas, eh, las máquinas eléctricas, las profesionales, las grandes. Y en México eh, hicimos la decisión de quedarnos con las máquinas portátiles mecánicas. Y yo creo que fue una buena decisión, porque logramos producir más de mil máquinas eh, por día, 365 mil máquinas, y luego crear un consorcio industrial donde se produjo de todo y realmente se logró una posición única en la presencia de México en América Latina.
Okay, I I think that this interview, this video interview, was really really uh, clear. Um, Jan was one of, as I say, one one of the main actor. As you um, heard, he started in 1955, so he's basically um, arrived until the end of the company. The company closed in Mexico in uh, 2002. And the same uh, Landucci. Landucci was another important um, player of Olivetti, was director of um, marketing and communication, and in particular during 1968, he played an important role. Uh, the flagship product of Olivetti in Mexico uh, was the portable typewriter. The portable typewriter, of course, means a uh, uh, machine, uh, uh, Valentine, which is a very, very well known, uh, designed by Ettore Sozzas, uh, uh, but also other important uh, machines that we will see in a few a few slides. But also for uh, selling machines, we have to to see this important uh, uh, showroom. And this showroom was in uh, Paseo della della Reforma, that you know very. I hope that you know very well uh, the place. And this is another important place in Polanco, is the Torre del, del Relojo. Uh, this um, place was, as we can see maybe uh, in the middle of this image, the black one, the black and white, Centro Cultural Mexico Italia, and the name of Adriano, Adriano Livetti. was a, a, you can say a cultural service uh, for uh, the entire community. And we re can recognize some places for reading, some places also uh, for watching movies and, of course, attending conferences and so, and so on. And so on. so uh, was really, really important for, uh, we can say, um, social and cultural responsibility of the company. And the designer was Von Clear, V-O-N-K-L-I-E-R. Okay, uh, this is a picture of some packs, some packagings uh, designed by some, uh, of course, designers in, uh, in Italy. Uh, we can recognize two different logotypes, and <clears throat> it's the airport of Paraná. Paraná is in Argentina. Uh, it's a photo El Halcón, and this picture comes from the Archivio Storico Olivetti in, uh, in Ivrea. Without date, SD, so we can, uh, we don't know uh, the, the date, but we can maybe suppose that uh, we, because of there are two different logotypes, we can maybe say that the first logotype on the bottom side of uh, this slide comes from uh, 1933, 34, and the other comes from after uh, World War II. So this picture, of course, is a picture taken in the second part of the 40s. And in that period, there was not an idea of corporate image because we see two different packs. This is one of the main uh, uh, things that we have to say just seeing this picture. Uh, this is a, another uh, map uh, with some uh, places connected to Olivetti, uh, it is Latin countries, in particular uh, South America. We can see that there, are, there were two main factories, one in Argentina and in uh, Buenos Aires, and one in uh, Sao Paulo in Brazil, but also other companies for uh, um, the distribution, mainly distribution and the sale of uh, Olivetti products in Colombia and we can see in, uh, in Peru and other in Uruguay and other in other uh, countries. Here another picture of uh, <clears throat> um, the main uh, Colombian uh, airplanes, uh, national uh, um, air company and co the. Um, uh, Avianca, National de Colombia, and we can see also some uh, packs uh, again uh, uh, coming from the 50s. Here we see uh, the logotypes. As we said before, earlier, uh, we have some um, logotypes designed in some 
decades. The first one was in 1908. We have to say that the company was founded in 1908 uh, by Camillo Olivetti, the father of Adriano Olivetti. Uh, Adriano Olivetti was the main uh, uh, chair of the company. We basically know him, but of course, there is also the father who was an engineer as uh, Adriano. Xanti Shavinsky was an important uh, graphic designer from uh, Switzerland. Switzerland. Uh, he came from uh, Bauhaus in uh, um, he moved to Italy after 1933, and he entered also in the Livetti company. So he designed this logotype, we can, the second one, which is very, very interesting because we have a very clear uh, recognition of uh, the product because there is the typeface coming from the typewriter. Giovanni Pintori, 1947. So maybe the picture we saw before, so with the, pa the, the packagings uh, coming from the airplane are packagings of 1940, after 1947, for sure. We have another um, logotype designed by Nizzoli in 1952, and also Walter Balmer again in 19, um, 1970. Here we have some uh, important uh, people working for Olivetti. We mentioned many times, uh, and I'm sure that um, Professor Lampugnani mentioned designers and graphic designer, but I want to also to highlight the role of engineers, the role of writers, the role of poets, photographers, and other people working with uh, Adriano Olivetti and other people in uh, Ivrea. Ivrea, maybe I forgot to tell you that it's, a small city, 40 kilometers from uh, from Turin, so it's not far from from here. And in uh, in Turin, there there was and there is of course uh, right now there was Fiat company, which is a which was a, a, which is a company totally different from uh, from uh, in Olivetti company. So just at 40 kilometers of distance two different words, totally uh, different. We can say maybe uh, something, um, some words more about these two diff different philosophical approaches. Here we have some parts of the Programma 101. As I said, it was one of the main uh, computers, desktop computer was the first one, designed 1964, 1965. And here we see some uh, engineers working for uh, these machines. So all the, the teams um, that we can see here work for many, many projects. So for instance, Virginia Pollini, who are Italian architects from Milano, work also for uh, um, <clears throat> the plain of Valle d'Aosta, which is a region, which was a region also uh, in, in, in Italy. And so uh, they were designing an architecture, which is the factory in Ivrea, but also they worked for a plan and also um, gave a contribution also for the design of a machine, a typewriter machine. So as you, as we can see, the teams uh, work together. So different culture coming from different sectors working together. And here we have Natale Cappellaro and Giuseppe Beccio, again with Multisumma 14. It's a printing calculator, 19, uh, 1940-48. And of course, Camillo Olivetti is the father of uh, Olivetti. 1908 is the, the, the era of foundation. Uh, he was born in 1868. He, was, he died in 1943. Um, he uh, got a degree in industrial engineering at the Politecnico di Torino. Um, same uh, regarding Adriano Olivetti. And in 1993, Camillo Olivetti visited the Chicago, Chicago World's Fair. It was really, really important. So he went there and, of course, he, he stayed also in touch with some uh, important companies. Uh, and it was really, really important to go uh, there and have a kind of tour of the United States just, just to see and just to, uh, to um, have a, a clear idea of how companies, how industries work there. 
This is the first uh, typewriter, uh, the first one in Italy. It's uh, the, the name is as you see here M1. Uh, it was designed in 1909. Actually, uh, it was um, distributed starting from 1911, in particular at <clears throat> the exposition in Turin, 19, uh, 1911. The chassis was in a cast iron, was, we can say, heavy, heavy machine, uh, was around uh, 17 kilos. So actually um, very, very heavy. Uh, because if we think about other portable machines, such as Lettera 22, maybe you heard something about Lettera um, 22, uh, it was just uh, 37, um, um, sorry, 3.7 kilos. So actually, we, we moved from uh, 17 until 3.7. The same regarding Valentine or Valentina, if you prefer. Another important uh, machine uh, by, uh, as we already said, by Ettore Sozzas in 18, uh, 1968. Um, so many uh, portable machines uh, after this one, but this was very iconic. I said 1909, but actually it was patent in 1908. So actually at the real beginning when the company was founded, they started to uh, construct, to, to uh, to develop uh, this project that, uh, that is not far from uh, the model coming from the United States. So it's not far from the Underwood um, model. So this is the machine in front of the factory designed by Figini and Pollini. So you see the facade uh, in glass, which, is, uh, which was really important in the 1930s. So an industry with a lot of window a lot of light coming from outside or something new adriano olivetti uh, is the main uh, actor of the company he was responsible for a radical transformation of the ivrea plants so he changed totally the production in, uh, in Ivrea and after Ivrea in uh, other, other places. Uh, he was born in 1901. He died in 1960, as you see, uh, it was February 2027. 20, um, he was on, the, on a train uh, from uh, Milano to Lausanne in uh, Switzerland. And it happened on a train. Anyway, he graduated in engineering at the Politecnico di Torino, and in 1924, uh, he started to work in the company, I mean, in the company of the father, so in, uh, in the main factory in, uh, in Ivrea. In uh, 1925, as we can see in uh, this picture, he toured the USA, so he started a tour around many uh, countries in the United States. I want to highlight uh, this biographical um, feature aspect because I think it's really, really important. He started to see, again, some uh, companies, some industries in action in many, parts of, um, in many parts of the world, in particular in many parts of the uh, United States. So as we see here, he, because this is a schema, this is just a sketch he designed using a paper coming from the, um, the hotel in the new, one hotel in New York City. And so we see that he went to New York, he went after that, so he stayed basically in the east side of United States, he went also to Providence and to Boston, but um, he stayed for a, a long period also in Detroit, we see here in the middle. So he went to visit, in particular, the Ford company. And on his return, he drew up a wide ranging program of innovative projects to modernize operations at Olivetti. And he did many things, the decentralized organization of personnel, direction functions, rationalization of time and assembly methods, development of commercial network in Italy, 
He also established a design and communication office in, uh, in Milano. So he made many, many things just to, to change uh, the company in a, in, a different, in a different way. This is a picture of, of Ivrea, of Ivrea, and in particular of the factories. We can recognize some uh, elements, in particular the, the main um, company. And um, uh, maybe, I don't know if you can see uh, my mouse. Anyway, here is the main factory. And here there is the Centro Studio Esperienze. So it's a place just for the innovation. It's a center for uh, studying and, of course, doing um, innovation. <clears throat> Well, um, I want to stay a little bit more and talking about, um, of course, architectures. I think it's really important. But when he came from the United States, he um, tried to brought, tried to bring also a kind of, you can say, Fordism, but was very light. A light Fordism was brought to Ivrea and very light if we compare to um, the Fordism applied in the United States, or what happened, for instance, in uh, the Fiat company or the Fiat plant in, in Turin. So first of all, we can say uh, the, 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 um, the use of the light it is really, really important. The second important aspect was the presence of many social um, elements just to um, social, we can say, offices, just to um, make the people aware that social elements were, were really, really important, social uh, um, features of factories and all the, the social activities were, were really, really important. So we can maybe um, just list some important features of Olivetti philosophy. First of all, respectful, respectful a work organization, which is really, really important. Second, he organized a new alliance between factory and territory. So the company was in a place and this company established a really an, an interesting relationship with the territory. The third point is that he focused on, uh, Olivetti, focused on job stability um, and worker loyalty so it was really important that people uh, work in a good way the people uh, stay uh, in a, in a company in their in uh, his company for a long period so olivetti um, built um, built factories which are which are not only places for uh, production and work but also is important really important drivers of social and cultural development. That means that social features was uh, really important. And so uh, in a certain way, we can consider him like a reformer, an industrialist with in a different idea of company. The company was very market oriented. So um, selling products was really important and he normally obtained very high profit margins with aggressive marketing policies. That means that, uh, let's say that uh, the productive cost of a DB Summa, which was a um, um, calculating machine in 1958 was around a uh, hundred thousand liras that is around 50 uh, us dollars and they used to tell they use sorry they used to sell at 600,000 lira that means uh, 300 um, us dollars so the productive cost was a hundred they used to sell at 600,000 so six times more so actually the benefits were huge for the company 
but these profits were distributed to the territory through welfare policies. This is a key asset of the company. So as I said, that social future, social um, activities for uh, uh, employees were important. It means that welfare policy um, played an important role in uh, <clears throat> Ivrea. That means new schools, schools for, uh, um, we can say, the, the, the daughters and the son of employees, but means also homes for employees, means also medical clinics, um, in a certain way also kindergartens, colonies, that means uh, uh, places for uh, staying during the summer, and also libraries, libraries for uh, employees. Here we, sa we see some social services, like the company Kindergarten by Figini and Pollini in 1939 and 1940 41. But the core, as we said, of the activity was the designing of excellent, very well known, very well recognized worldwide typewriters. And here we have a list of some companies, sorry, a list of some. Um, um, products such as Olivetti M1 here on the left side, and designed by not Camille Olivetti but some engineers. But as I say, the model, uh, the, the matrix of this project comes from US, in particular from Underwood. One of the main uh, iconic model was in the, the one in the middle was a portable machine, and we uh, displayed it in Puebla. Uh, last year, it's the Olivetti portable machine MP1, 1932. Aldo and Adriano Magnelli were the two main, uh, you can say, designers. Lexicon 80, 1948, Marcello Nizzoli and Giovanni Beccio. It's interesting because here we have the name of designer, Marcello Nizzoli, and the name of the engineer. So again, uh, many teams working, of people working together. Lettera 22, it's um, a milestone uh, uh, product of the Italian design. You can see it at the MoMA, Museum of Modern Art in New York. You can see many um, museums in, uh, I think, in uh, Mexico, in uh, UK, of course, in Italy, in Trenale, in Milan, and many places. Actually, this machine, um, was a best-seller uh, product, uh, was produced also in Mexico City, in, uh, in um, Mexico City, of course, and also in Puebla, because in Puebla there was also a, a company, um, a factory, and it was designed in 1950 by Marcello Nizzoli and Giovanni Beccio, again, so designer and engineer. Raphael, it's uh, another typewriter um, typewriter machine. And Lettera 32, another very popular machine by Nizzoli. Lettera, uh, Lettera 22, <clears throat> um, with this product, Marcello Nizzoli won also an important award called uh, Compasso d'Oro. Um, it's a very important uh, award uh, in Italy, uh, but it's um, inter internationally very well known. Lettera d'Ora uh, 31, another very popular machine. Sometimes they change the name of uh, uh, the typewriters. Lettera d'Ora was um, sold in, uh, in Italy. The name was different, uh, was Escolar in, uh, in, in Mexico. And it was designed by Ettore Sozzas in 1965. Olivetti Studio 45, another portable machine, again, uh, very popular in Mexico. Um, the same model was in Puebla, and we displayed it. Valentine, it's an iconic uh, um, machine. It's all in ABS, so in plastic. It's a product of 1968, uh, and this was interesting 
also for the advertising campaign um, behind, and we can say that anticipated and also um, um, the sale of this product designed by Sotsas and Perry, Perry King. Lettera 36, 1970, Sotsas and Hans von Klier. We already mentioned Hans von Klier with the Torre del Relojo in, in Polanco and the cultural, um, we can say, um, center, the center of Mexico City. Uh, Lettera uh, 35, Bellini and Macchicassia and Pazzini and Pasqui, so several people working for the same product. Lettera 25, so here we reach, um, we can say, a type of products very, um, very popular, not expensive. So they penetrated, we can say, the school market. This is another important topic of the portable machine, the Olivetti portable machines in, uh, in Mexico. Because during the 70s and the 80s, uh, all uh, these machines, in particular, Lettera 25, Lettera 35, and we can say Studio 45, sometimes Lettera 22 and Lettera 32 were uh, sold in particular in the schools. And uh, they, as I say, they entered in, in the, the, the school market. So many, many people use these machines uh, during the high school. And it was amazing because these people, after, um, after the period of the high school, maybe they moved and they went or to the university or just to work. And when they enter in the office, they ask for a new Olivetti machine. So the, the sale of this machine increased a lot during the time. I just want to, uh, as I said, the real beginning, try to talk about design, about architecture, about uh, social uh, aspects, about social services, because all these elements are tight, are close together. So as I said at the very beginning, complexity of the Olivetti is something like that. So to get the entire picture, we need to understand what the designers, what the architect did um, designing this architecture. It happened in the uh, uh, 1930s uh, uh, in, uh, in Ivrea, not far from the main factories, but also uh, designing some, uh, some products. This is the Centro Servizi Sociale. So it's uh, um, an architecture where um, many different uh, services, such as the library, open for the, the, the people, this is a kindergarten. So this is the library, so it's incredible. If you think that people uh, could stay uh, for two hours, basically the, the break, the lunch break was from uh, 12.30 until uh, 2.30 p.m. So for two hours, people, employees, had the chance to read the newspaper, with maybe a design magazine, uh, maybe uh, reach a book translated from English to Italian by the publishing house uh, of um, Adriano Olivetti. Edizione di Comunità is the name of the publishing house. So you understand social uh, aspects also uh, were part of, are integrated, are part of the architecture and design activity, medical care for employees. So it's something connected to welfare policies. Comunità, Comunità is the name of a magazine, is the name also of the idea of community. So um, as I said, the real beginning, factories were located in a place and he also um, established a very interesting relationship between the company and the territory and between the factory and the people living in, uh, in the territory living in the city so the company again um, were drivers of social and cultural development here we can see we can recognize Adriano Olivetti and some covers 
of books about, as, he, as we can see here, Le Corbusier, uh, Architectura and uh, Architectura y Sociedad uh, by Gutkin. Sele Arte is um, a magazine about arts. Italia Costruisce, important, um, important books translated from English, from French, from other, from Spanish, of course, from other languages into Italian. Summer camp, um, the children uh, of uh, the employees could stay for a period uh, during summertime in a so-called colonia, <laughs> colony uh, in. Um, by the, the, the sea, for instance, in Tuscany. And this is a, a summer camp in, in Italy. Here we have some examples of houses in, uh, in Ivrea, also designed for not only the uh, employees, but also for the directors of the company. So uh, as we see, there, we can recognize some <clears throat> elements coming from the international style uh, movement. So in Ivrea, there was a kind of landscape, a uh, very interesting international style landscape coming from the 30s. Let's see uh, some posters. This is another important, you can see it. Uh, on many manuals of graphic design, it's very famous. And uh, this was designed by Xanti Shavinsky. Xanti Shavinsky, uh, we already mentioned him when we talk about the logotype in 1934. And this was designed in 1935. So this is the poster for the portable um, writer machine uh, called MP1. It's a red machine. So the color in 1930, 30s was important. So not only with Valentine, as we uh, normally used to say, we, as we usually say, well, um, the red color of Valentine um, designed by success was important because it introduced, no, actually the color was already introduced in 1930s in the middle. And not only the red one, there was also a violet um, and also um, a blue uh, machine. So different, several colors for the office and also for uh, the domestic, uh, for a domestic use. Here we have also, we can recognize a woman with a very um, particular hat with a 45, uh, you can say 45 degrees. So there is a, a symmetry broken by uh, this hat, and we recognize also the red <clears throat> over uh, her mouth, which is very similar to the red of the the type uh, the typewriter. Some um, posters, and here uh, again, uh, Xanti Shavinsky, after designing logotype, after designing a poster. In the meantime, also he designed a, you can say, a showroom for Olivetti. This was in uh, Torino uh, in 1930-35. Here we can recognize some uh, some machines like M20 and MP MP1. Um, I just go very fast here. Some posters, um, Marco. If there are some uh, some questions uh, or comments, please uh, you can uh, stop me when whenever you want. Of course, uh, these are some uh, some posters also from the Spanish market in Barcelona. There was a very important uh, company, and here there is a Olivetti Studio 42 a poster, another one on the right side and for the N40. And after the war, Olivetti started to work also on uh, calculators and the communication changed, totally changed. So here we have no machines. Here we, have no, we cannot recognize any elements coming from Olivetti, but we can just recognize um, how can we say uh, the um, an element just for 
accounting coming from uh, coming from the past. So it's an old uh, instrument, an old tool for counting. Um, Nivola, since Galli, and Veteremich. Veteremich was a, a photographer. Uh, and Shavinsky, again, we already mentioned. So as you see, we uh, used to repeat many, many uh, graphic design working together for uh, a publication regarding um, the, the changing of the, the, um, the writing, the history of writing. Storia della scrittura is the title. And here we can recognize the logotype by Santi Shavinsky and several um, writings uh, until, uh, of course, they type a uh, typeface coming from the machine. Lexicon 80, designed by Marcello Nizzoli and Giovanni Beccio. Um, you can see um, this machine that it was very important, very iconic. Uh, and here we have for the same machine also a design patent. I was in uh, Rome um, several years ago and in the archive in Rome, we can see we can uh, um, so we can uh, I had the chance to 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 see some uh, patents of Olivetti. So here it is just the, the the protection of the interior part of the machine. Marcello Nizzoli designed not only the machine but also the poster. So the affiche for communicating for the advertising of the company. Which is very interesting uh, with the level uh, with the with an element here in the center which is very similar to a bird so the bird is in the middle of the graphic and with some uh, colors uh, but uh, as you uh, maybe can recognize there is no idea of corporate image so the the quality of the graphics is very high so uh, it's very well recognized everywhere in the world has a high quality high level of uh, design graphic the graphic design and the quality of the products but there were not rules regarding the um the graphic design until the 70 when they introduced a corporate image manual we will see in a few few slides I already mentioned this model, this um, writer, a typewriter, it's Lettera 22, uh, designed by, again, Beccio and Nizzoli. Um, it was produced also in Mexico City for a long period. And maybe you remember that Millan used to say that, uh, he used to sell this machine and he used also to, um to describe also the characteristic the futures of uh, these machines also um pushing and also jumping on the machine just to um, make the people understand that this is a very strong machine and also the aluminium was very uh, strong so this is aluminium this is important not cast um cast iron the cast iron was the material of the first M1. So we change, we switch from also one material to another. And this is aluminum. So as maybe I already, I, I said earlier, it was um, 30.7 kilos. So not so heavy, uh, not so light. Actually was an interesting machine, very portable. And also the communication was interesting with Raymond Savignac poster. Um, so here again, the typeface and the logo are close together, letter 22 and the, the logo, Olivetti logo is here. And if we see here, there is only the logo on the bottom side. So actually this is not really good corporate image. The quality is great, the quality is high. But it's again, again uh, there was not a manual until the 70s. 
uh, Divi Suma 24, Marcello Nizzoli and Nicola Cappellaro, uh, designed in 1956. And again, some uh, posters uh, just for communicating the quality of um, the products and in particular the quality of um, the typewriter ma machines and, and they use just numbers. And so they moved all the uh, references to the machines and they use just the numbers. This is the advertising for the Studio 44 uh, typewriter. Again, very interesting because we do not have any uh, typewriters. Uh, we just have a shadow in the middle. So the composition is sym symmetric. Um, we have on the left side uh, a flower and on the right side a rose on the left side. On the right side, just the logo typo, the logo, um, the logo of the, the company and the name of the machine, uh, Studio 44. So we see on the left side an obsolete tool, an obsolete instrument for writing uh, that in a certain way um, is considered like a vase, like um, a place for uh, just um, putting a, a flower. And on the right side, just the name of the typewriter, just to say that they knew the innovation is on the right side. We saw uh, in, a, in Paseo della Reforma just a window of a, um, a showroom. And here we have another iconic uh, showroom in New York City, uh, in Fifth Avenue. Uh, the designers were uh, Italians and coming from uh, basically uh, Milano. The, 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 the design firm, the architectural firm is, was the BBPR. Uh, Banfi, uh, Bel Gioioso, <clears throat> Teresuti, and Rogers. Um, Banfi died during the war, so actually the name uh, was still the same, the name of the firm, but actually the design were just uh, Bel Gioioso, Teresuti, and Rogers. It happened in 1954. We can recognize some uh, uh, machines that are here, and it is interesting for uh, the exhibit design with marble coming from uh, uh, Valle d'Aosta, uh, so long far, uh, so long travel, actually it was not really sustainable, we can say, a long trip. And um, here we have a, an interesting artwork by um, Costantino Nivola. The large mural by Costantino Nivola is here, also in this picture, 23 meters long. Marble and the machines and the light. You can see also the lamp here. A very, very sophisticated way of communicating and displaying the products. Leo Leoni, Olivetti showroom in Chicago, 1958. I, maybe it's... Uh, 1920, maybe I have to accelerate a little bit. Um, these are just other two um, showrooms in uh, Milano on uh, the right side. Uh, oh, sorry, I made a mistake. Not. Um, I don't know what happened, but maybe I can. Can you see? I lost. Uh... Eh, no, devi tornare al PowerPoint, devi condividere di nuovo. Uh, yeah, I know. I, ah, okay, it's here. Sorry, thank you. There you are. Okay. Um, so, Giulio Bonfante on uh, the left side, uh, and the window of the Olivetti showroom on the right side in Galleria Vittorio Emanuele. So, this is an exhibition actually in a fair in uh, Torino in 1967, the other one um, in, uh, in Milano. And we can recognize here the letter 22, here again uh, the, the, the logo uh, by Nizzoli, and then 
here the Olivetti showroom in Venice by Carlo Scarpa, another important uh, place for uh, displaying uh, using high quality um, materials, high quality details uh, by Carlo Scarpa, <clears throat> Italian architect who designed this very impressive, actually, we strongly recommend to visit this showroom uh, in, uh, in, uh, in Venice. I hope that you will have the chance to come to Italy and of course I'm sure that you will go first to Milano and Venice and Rome maybe in Venice you have the chance to, to see it. Um, Unità Residenziale Oves. So I just trying to follow a kind of timeline. So here we are in the end of the 60s uh, and we are again in Ivrea. So we saw sh some showrooms, we saw some factories uh, around the world and of course there were some uh, also buildings uh, and architectures also for uh, people uh, working uh, at uh, the Olivetti in Ivrea. This is a building designed by two Italian uh, uh, architects who were professor at the Politecnico di Torino, Gabezzi, Gabetti e Isola, Gabetti and Isola, um, design 1968, the, the, the shape of this architecture, as you can see here, it's um, a semispheric uh, shape, so it's curved and it embraces a kind of hill. And here there are some uh, uh, small uh, um, apartments for uh, people working at Olivetti. And here there are some uh, pieces designed by Gabetti Isa, this is a lamp, and this is not designed by Gabetti Isola. Um, uh, Sacco is a sitting very, very famous of the end of the 60s. Gatti, Paulini, Teodoro are the architects and designers. So actually it's not far. If you maybe heard or studied the Unité d'Habitation, uh, designed by Le Corbusier in, Marse in Marseille, in uh, Marsiglia, in, uh, in France. Actually, th these are very small apartments uh, with a facade, with um, um, just the, the, the windows to um, one direction here, that is the hill, um, very close, very, not far, sorry, not far from uh, the factory. Again, other buildings in uh, Ivrea, designed by Cappai Mainardis. And these buildings uh, is in uh, uh, metal, um, some high-tech building with high-tech architecture. Um, you see the years 1971, 1985. So uh, again, it's not far from what Renzo Piano um, design from from, from uh, the Saint Pompidou in uh, in uh, in Paris. So the philosophical idea uh, is not so far from that one. Again, other offices, other buildings in Ivrea, Palazzo Uffici One and Palazzo Uffici Due by Bernasconi, Fiocchi, and Izzoli, The first one in Gino Valle. So. I recommend, in a certain way, to come to Turin, of course, first. Come to my city to visit uh, many interesting architecture, and then maybe we can take a bus or a train, and we can go to Ivrea together. I'm very happy to, to come with you and Marco to visit uh, uh, this place, because it's an amazing. As I said, it's uh, it entering in the UNESCO industrial city uh, list. Um, so there are many amazing architecture designed by famous architects. Uh, many, many people coming from abroad used to, to go to Ivrea and visit just the architectures. Uh, these are some, uh, again, important uh, factories uh, by Marco Zanuso. It was in uh, Buenos Aires. Marco Zanuso was an architect, but also a designer uh, from Milano. And here we can recognize some uh, 
piece is coming from coming from also the industrial uh, um, production. So um, uh, here you see some elements are basically the same. So the, the idea to to there is a, a factory in uh, San Paolo, Olivetti factory in uh, Guara, Guaraluos in uh, San Paolo by Marco Zanudo. So the repetitivity is another key key um, element of this architecture. And the light is a zenithal light, so it comes from uh, uh, this part. You see here the, 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 the perspex and other materials uh, that makes the, the light entering. And so actually we don't have a facade like in Ivrea, but um, the light goes uh, in a very uh, interesting way inside the building. Kenzo Tange in uh, Yokohama in Japan, 1970. And here I have to, to spend just some minutes, some a couple of minutes, just to talk about the, <clears throat> the role of Olivetti also in designing, producing some computers. Here we have Mario Chu. Mario Chu was an engineer from uh, China and he studied in the United States and was also a professor in uh, New York. And then he moved uh, at the end of the 50s to, to Italy and he was the leader. He was the, the, yeah, the leader of, we can recognize him here again, the leader of a group, who, a team who designed the ELEA um, 900, 9000, sorry, which is a important uh, com uh, computer, computer, quite huge computer mainframe. So mainframe computer, I'm sure that you um, had the chance to, to see some uh, mainframe computer. That means some uh, um, elements in a big room. Uh, all these elements were connected uh, among them between uh, some elements such as electric, electricity and other elements. So here you see all the elements and these are very, um, in a, in, we can say aerial in the air and it was designed by uh, Sotsas, designed by Sotsas all these elements. So Elea 9000 and then Elea uh, 9002 is one of a series of mainframe computers uh, by Olivetti. The system made entirely with transistor for high performance was conceived, designed and developed by a small group of researchers led by Mario Chu. This is just a unit of, you can say memory, it's just a um, few K of memories of the computer, so it's very heavy. I displayed this product in another exhibition about Olivetti in 2012. Actually, you can say it's 50 uh, centimeters um, by 70 and heavy, I think 20, 30 kilos. And this is the <clears throat> interface, uh, the design, the interface design of the computer. And here we have the design of Ettore Sotsas again uh, with Hans von Clear and von Ock. And our, we can maybe recognize some elements also coming from uh, maybe the UN school, and also um, Maldonado and Guy Bonsipe gave a contribution to this project. So many important designers and tutors. Programma 101 was really, really important also for uh, the moon landing phase. Actually, as I said, it was constructed in 1965. Here we, we can recognize the machine in, uh, um, in an office at the, the NASA office in the United States and was used just for uh, some uh, phases. The design was by Mario Bellini. I mentioned some uh, engineers. Uh, were very, very important, but of course, also the art, the, um, the designer who changed, totally changed the shape of 
the computer. So this is an amazing computer, 1965, the first one uh, that we could uh, put on a, a desktop, so on a desktop, uh so um it's the first desktop computer and we can see the printer here and here there is a, a place for uh, programming so we had the chance to insert a digital uh, um you can say a card just to program the, the machine and you can use uh, also in a hospital you can use for a uh, uh, as we said, in uh, for uh, some landing phases uh, for the moon landing, and in several um, in several um, um, places, this is very iconic. The Valentine or Valentine, because this is the name of a painting coming from France. And the name was Valentine. So actually, you can call as you prefer. Valentine is great. Valentine is great as well. It's a red machine, very conic, uh, with also a cover. Um, we displayed it also in uh, in Puebla. Um, it's something that changed totally the the, uh, the portable uh, um, typewriters. It's in a ABS and was just 3.5 kilos. Actually, this is a machine of 1969. Lettera 22 was a machine designed in 1950. So, and the technology did not increase too much to justify the change of um, the, the typewriter. So, um, Lettera 22 was, as I said, a, a top seller product. Valentine was a, a very particular product that, of course, all the architects and designers used to used to have in uh, their firm, in uh, their office, in, or in some place in uh, in uh, her home. But actually, they did not sell too many uh, too many um, products. This is the advertising uh, campaign. Um, again, uh, everything was directed by Sotsas, and this is a poster by Milton Glaser. Milton Glaser was the same uh, graphic designer we mentioned for uh, the, the product design during the Olympic Games in 1968. So here it's 1969. Uh, I mentioned the Pushpin Studio, and Milton Glaser was one of the main, the head of uh, Pushpin Studio. And the inspiration comes from uh, Piero di Cosimo's painting. It was a painting uh, displayed at the National Gallery in London. This is the painting. So you can recognize here just a piece, just a small part of the painting um, on the right side. And we can say many things about this painting and this poster. Um, so first of all, we have a type right, um, sorry, a typewriter, red, the same red we can see here, the flowers. So uh, there is an interesting link to the poster uh, designed by um, by Xanti Shaminsky in 1935, the MP1 portable machine. I hope you remember. And there is also a dog uh, here close to the machine. So the dog is a symbol also, also, also of um, fidelity. I'm sure that you understand. Here there is, here there are some um, issues coming from the past. So tradition, modernity, um, and well, there are many, many interesting elements uh, coming from the past. But first of all, we have to say that Milton Glaser um, was a very interesting, um, very keen observer of painting coming from Renaissance. So he used to move to Rome, he used to go to uh, Florence and he used to go to also to 
um, the National Gallery in London just to to see some paintings. Okay, sorry, I have to. I think I have to to, to close. So I go uh, I go very quickly to the end of my presentation. Olivetti logo designed by Marcello Nizzoli. We already uh, saw him. Uh, saw it during the presentation uh, I did of the the, um, the press room in Mexico, Mexico City. I hope you remember uh, this shape. And here we have some uh, trademarks and logotypes. So different, several, no corporate image until, until, until here, until 1971. Red books by Hans von Clear in collaboration with Clino Trini Castelli. Um, we used to call them the red books. Uh, it's a very interesting graphic product, graphic design product. Um, designed by, again, Perry King and Castelli. There are several folders and many interesting elements just to um, have some, just having some instructions for designing the logos, designing some typeface uh, and the use of every graphic elements coming from the company uh, to, for instance, for covering part of um, the cars, part of the, the tracks and, and so on. These are some uh, <clears throat> products for the office and designed by, again, uh, important design and architects of the company, close to the company. We uh, saw also some of them uh, uh, during the 1968 uh, images uh, uh, coming from, of course, the Olympic Games. Here we have some different packs. Here we can recognize the same, the same logo. So I hope you remember uh, the different logos at the real beginning of the, when we talk about the airplane coming um, from uh, Italy. Um, and the picture was taken in Paraná in Argentina. These are other details of the corporate image manual. This is, I think, the last picture. This is the Enzo Mari. Enzo Mari is another important Italian um, designer. He's from Piedmont, from uh, Novara. And he designed many products, of course, but also his interesting agenda layout and also he designed the, the, the agenda, which was a, a kind of milestone agenda for uh, uh, all the agendas that came um, uh, came out after after it after after it in 1968. So we can recognize the entire week, starting from Sunday, Monday, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, until Saturday, and this was divided basically into parts. So for the first in the first half we can add some sketches. In the, the second half, we have the hours. So starting from eight until I think um, 8 p.m. And uh, of course, um, before Sunday, we can add out other sketches. So it's a free area. It's empty air area for, uh, for designing. On, on the top of this slide, we can recognize an interesting um, <clears throat> layout coming from uh, um, artistic movement, movement of the 60s. And so we recognize also some uh, layout, uh, um, uh, arte, um, arte cinetica, uh, sorry, arte programmata, uh, which was a very, very important uh, movement and in summary, uh, work in, uh, in particular in, uh, in the contest, and he used also to um, design many products and also graphic design in a certain way in a really strict connection with this art movement. <clears throat> I hope it's I hope it was clear, and I'm here for questions and other comments, maybe. 
Thank you. Thank you very much, Pier Paolo. Can you listen to me? Yes, sure. Uh, uh, super. Thank you very much. I, what can I do? I in, I stop sharing, maybe? Uh, yeah, if you want. Yes, as, as you prefer. Now, now people are seeing you, okay? Okay. Uh, we've had very interesting participation, many people. Now there are fewer because we are a little bit late. But we have some, uh, I can show some comments here. Uh, <laughs> of, of people Thank passing you. by here, Viri commenting that uh, her mother's uh, Olivetti is still working. They have them. Then uh, Victor said, super interesting. Uh, Perla as well. She was interested in all of the uh, timeline you 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 mentioned. Uh, also, they 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 loved the different. Uh, uh, the evolution of the Olivetti uh, logo. Also, people talking to you in Italian. Wow, <laughs> Marilena, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> yeah. pe pe uh, people remembering the, the the exhibition in Puebla. Uh, and uh, 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 if if you want, uh, we have a couple of questions. Sure. Uh, the first one is uh, from Victorino. Actually, we 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 planned to have Victorino live, but he had to move at half past two to another meeting so he sent you this uh, question can you see okay. it regarding the experience of olivetti what would be the main lesson that we can get from this reconciliation from among industrial and social development olivetti history is an excellent example of our future in these circumstances yeah actually <clears throat> covid 19 uh, uh, pandemic also help us to understand things in a different way. Of course, we maybe read many interesting articles uh, by many, many peoples from different countries. Actually, Olivetti, as uh, Victorino said, started to, um, to, to establish a very interesting uh, liaison uh, link between uh, the company and so the factory and the city, the territory. So every in every place and in every time. So this is the legacy what we said before. So not only during the period where uh, when um, Adriano Olivetti was alive, but also after 1960s, as I I said uh, on um, February 27th, uh, 1960, he died. And actually, there are, we have many examples of factories designed after his death that were basically, uh, I don't want to say uh, the same, of course, but they basically tried to, um, we can say, reproduce some social elements, some social services that were also in Ivrea, in Pozzuoli, and in other parts of the world. I mentioned the, 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 the factory in, uh, in Mexico City, uh, in, uh, in, uh, not far from... Uh, uh, from Mexico City, 50 kilometers in the north. I, I, I of course, I can share again uh, uh, the, the screen, but I'm sure that you remember um, the, the, the Legorretas project plan was amazing because we had in 1968, not in the center of Mexico City, but at 50 kilometers uh, far from the center of the city, also a company with a library a company for producing machines with uh, um, just some uh, spaces for sharing also books, for sharing magazines, for sharing culture. I think this is one of the main uh, uh, legacy. Uh, so something that coming from the past and we inherited from uh, this culture. I hope I answer to uh, Victorino's Yes, also here there's a comment from Natalia. Ciao, love the Olivetti. Oh, Natalia, thank you, Olivetti. Probably my father is a huge <laughs> fan and has like around 10 at home. Wow. Yeah, I, when I was with, um, with Marco in uh, in Puebla and, and we, we organized together the exhibition at the museum, it was a very a great uh, experience. Uh, and, it was an amazing uh, activity, and we stay in touch with many 
people also um, who use first the machines and it was amazing because they came to the museum and they also tried to type to use also to to hear the the, the, the sound the sound of the, the the machine actually is something of the past it's something that when we use our computer of course uh, it's something that we did not ever uh, not ever the chance to to to, to use it anyway uh, it's happened the same also in uh, Mexico City so many people uh, came to the exhibition and we gave also some uh, some speeches and we had in the first line of the conferences uh, maybe the daughters or the sons and people connecting in some way to um, we, we can say employees of Olivetti and the memory of that experience was incredible actually the company had some uh, big problems we can say in uh, the end of the 90s and they had to close in 2002 and today the company is as i said 100 uh, percent telecom italia and telecom italia is part of a french huge uh, company so actually they change a lot but they still produce uh, some uh, interesting computers some in interesting business um, uh, devices and products <clears throat> of course it's not the, the the company of 50 years ago and so it's very typical that you i mean you as mexican uh, have uh, it's very common having some uh, typewriting machine it's not so popular here in uh, in turin in in italy uh, of course i have a couple of uh, machines but um, now I used to to check immediately where so I used to turn down the, the machine I used to see immediately uh, you know the logo and the place of manufacturing so uh, when we were in uh, Puebla we display some company or some sorry some machines coming from some companies in Mexico and some some of them were also from from Italy and sorry if I <laughs> say many things but it was amazing because in Mexico in 1970 uh, there were the main factories for all the portable machines for the entire world. So when we in the 75 when we uh, used to buy also portable machines in Italy, some of them were uh, machines coming from Mexico. So actually, uh, again for. Uh, um, the greatest topic was really not good because, of course, the sustainability is not one of the main uh, um, topic at the time. But uh, uh, of course, the the, the market, uh, the Mexican market of portable machines was really important. Yeah, actually, also uh, we had the opportunity to to uh, have a uh, very profound interview with. Uh, Mr. Jorge Hernandez, uh, that's a yes. very nice uh, uh, man from Puebla that used to work uh, uh, for Olivetti uh, almost 50 years in Puebla. So he's a huge uh, uh, um, a source of information about the, the, the company and, and uh, what they were doing in, in, in the region. Actually, we're, we're going to publish in our new website online from Friday, the, the full video so you can uh, enjoy thank you, it thank you. and yeah. and also well if you want um Pierpaolo, we have uh, a last question that is somehow connected by by gabriel from toluca that is somehow okay. connected to uh, the one of victorino the one from victorino and after that we can uh, um, finish also because it's almost uh, 10 p.m in the night there in italy so you have to go back to your family as well. So mm -hmm. here's uh, Gabriel. What's the social responsibility, shared value, and development of the production sites within the core values of the company? And if so, how the creations of the shared value became so important for the company? Yeah, actually, I think I already answered, but I, I just want to highlight again uh, that, that the shared values 
uh, of the company was to provide services for uh, employees, for people working uh, in, uh, in, um, in the company. And uh, Adriano Olivetti wanted to, to uh, as I said many times, to, 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 to establish a new alliance among the different sect different areas the different also um, um, also political it's not maybe it's not so correct but also the different also uh, people and souls also we can say staying and working in a, in a place so they we want to establish a new relationship between uh, people working in the company and people staying in, uh, in the countryside, people uh, working in the factories and people also um, working in, uh, in, the, <clears throat> in Ivrea and in other, in other parts. So between the factory and the territory was one of the main exit asset, Instagram. <laughs> Well, no, the, thank you. this is this is this is your contact, okay? Yes, yeah, uh, sure. Uh, if you, uh, I mean, want you to 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 chat, of course, I I have an email. Maybe it's easier. Uh, name dot surname at polito dot it. Um, Pierpaolo dot Peruccio at polito. My university in uh, in Italy. Uh, polito punto it. IT. And there you are. Wow. So great. Uh, Thank you, Marco. That's a, that's actually, an amazing platform. Yeah, actually, we have another platform at the Polytechnic. It's a B, 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 uh, Big mm -hmm. Blue Button. It's an American platform, open source. And, but actually, we cannot interact interacting this way. I will uh, recommend to my rector. Uh, yes, it's it's very nice because uh, well, once you get, let's say, the the the, the kind of uh, director room functions is very nice because because it allows a very uh, engaging uh, real time interaction with the uh, with the audience. So yeah, that that that's very cool. So oh, actually, I think th that's all. Thank you, Marco. Thank you all. It was a great pleasure. Thank uh, you, Per Paolo. And of course, we will stay in touch and have a nice afternoon. What time is it? Ah, yes, one. No, it's uh, five to three p.m. Okay, so have a nice oh. uh, afternoon. Afternoon, uh, maybe mm -hmm. take a drink. Cheers. Yes, thank you very much. Uh, so, just as a reminder, uh, events of the week tomorrow. Bueno, paso en español. Mañana a la 1 uh, p.m. un diálogo con uh, Demetrios Copelliti, Stefano Ragazzo uh, de Ayuntamiento de Milano, presentando el proyecto uh, Milano Open Street en temas de peatonalización y construcción extraordinaria de infraestructura de ciclovías durante wow. el coronavirus. Por la tarde a las 6 tenemos un conversatorio sobre nuestra residencia interdisciplinaria entre artes y ciencias con el Departamento de Biotecnologías, Residencia COVID. El jueves, yo con Andrea Bartoli de Farm Cultural Park, eh, hablaremos de fabricar fiducia, fabricar confianza, los proyectos por eh, los dos lados del, del océano, eh, de inteligencia colectiva para después del coronavirus. Y viernes, 5.30 de la tarde, lanzamiento por fin eh, de la identidad completa eh, del MUI, incluyendo la, la página web. Entonces, Semana densa de, de eventos y ojalá nos veamos uh, pronto mañana, jueves y viernes uh, aquí en la página del MUI. Pero Pablo, muchas gracias. Thank you. Thank you so much. Te And queremos mucho. Have a nice afternoon. Bye bye. Bye bye. Chao. 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 <laughs>